Hey guys, this is Peter. I'm going to be talking about uh, important things about functions. So these are things that you should understand and you should know when you're looking at a function or looking at the graph of a function. These are very important things that you're, you're going to be using a lot throughout throughout algebra. So basically, to recap a little of what we've been doing, we've been talking about uh, uh, functions and how they look mathematically. So we understand that a function is a relationship between an input and an output. And we know that the input is something that you plug in and the output is what you get out of it. So in math, basically, the input almost always is the x value. So uh, the x value is what you plug into and then the y value is the answer you get out, the output, if you will. So we talked about what that looks like in terms of uh, graphing, where we have a, a graph. We have a point on the graph where it is the, the y-axis and the x-axis. And this point is x comma y, where again, we said that the x is the input and y is the output. So first we're going to talk about the x-intercept. Basically, the x-intercept is is where the line or the function in the graph where it crosses the x-axis, the x-axis being the horizontal. So what does this mean? Well, where the line crosses the x-axis, what is the y-value? Right here, what's the y-value? Well, the y-value right there, right here, it's going to be 0. So it's going to be x, which in this case is 3, comma, 0. So what's important about this is that the x-intercept happens when the y value is 0, so when the output is 0. So for in, th in this graph, the x-intercept is at 3, comma, 0. So we have the little table of values here, and, and basically this is going to tell us what the x-intercept is and what it, where it is located. So this is very important. Again, things you're going to be looking at from now to forever, basically. Now, uh, we know what the x-intercept is. So now the y-intercept, we can infer that it's where the y where the y-axis is crossed. Basically, where the line crosses the y-axis. So what does that mean? Well, remember how the x-intercept was where the y-value is equal to 0? Well, this is where the x value is equal to zero because you don't move along the horizontal axis but it's right here the y intercept so basically this point right here if we look at the coordinates which again are very important to understand this it's zero comma in this case it's three so that's the y intercept and this right here is going to be the x intercept three comma zero and now, you can see clearly in this example that the y-intercept, the x is 0, and with the x-intercept, the y is 0. So that's the main idea of the y and the x-intercept. And again, we're going to be using this a lot, a lot in the future. Let's go back to red. Now we're going to talk about domain. So here's where it starts to get a little harder, I guess. So domain basically is basically where the function exists in the horizontal direction. So this may sound confusing at first, but it's basically where the function, if you look at the graph, where, where the line is happening in, in, in the x direction. So let's, let's try to understand this using a graph. So right, right here, the line in the x direction, which is right here, let's draw a little line. It only, there is no line over here. There is no line over here. Nothing, nothing is happening to the left of that point. But the function does exist on this side. So that's a check, by the way. So basically, 
the function exists from here to forever, but it, it never exists over here. So basically, when we're looking at domain, is where we're, we're trying to see where the function is happening in the horizontal direction. It's very important in the horizontal direction. So basically, the domain of this function would be if we say domain, and we're going to talk about uh, interval notation in the future, but basically, a little sneak peek. Right here, the function in the x direction starts at zero. It's going to be a bracket. You can see what this means later. Comma, and, and it comma it starts at zero and then it goes up to well it goes to forever and we're gonna call that infinity so this function exists from zero all the way to infinity and this is the way I think is the most effective way to look at domain and we'll see more examples in the future don't worry if you don't understand yet Now, uh, let's talk about range. So domain was where the function is happening in the x direction. Now, conversely, range is where the function is happening in the y direction. So let's draw the same lines that we drew before. So we have this function. And let's try to see where it's happening in the y direction. Well, we know that below this point, the function doesn't exist. Look, there, there's no line be, below the x-axis, below the, the y point, be, below right here. It doesn't exist. So from there on down, that's an x. The function is not there. But then from here on up, the, func the function exists. Look, there's a line right here. So that's a check right there. So we would say that the function exists from this point right here from basically y is equal to 0 to all the way up to y is equal to infinity. So we're going to, in terms of uh, the notation we were talking about before, range is We'll see what the difference in parentheses at. In bracket is zero to infinity. Basically, we could the comma basically means two. So yeah, it it's basically where where the function exists, but in the y direction instead of the x direction as the domain was. And again, the zinni extremely important so right now we were talking about domain and range notation where we have parentheses something comma something where this right here means two so if we have from three to ten that means if it's domain, that means that the function in the x direction exists from 3 to 10. So we know that. And uh, in terms of range, we have the same exact thing, something to something. And this again could be any number. It could be 1 to infinity. Or it could be negative infinity to 1. It could be anything depending on the function. And basically, you just look at the graph and you see if it goes on forever or if it stops at one point and if you're looking at the domain or range. And uh, we were talking about the difference between a bracket and a parentheses. So basically, in, in um, domain and range notation, interval notation, if you will, um, if a point is defined, if it exists at that certain point, it's a bracket, and if it, if it doesn't, it's a parenthesis. So basically, 
every time we have an infinity on one side, it's always going to be a parenthesis because infinity goes on forever. So it, infinity is not a it's not a rigid point. But let's say it, the domain goes up to three, and at three it stops completely at the point three. Then you have a bracket. So uh, we'll look at an example where we're going to talk about both domain and range, which is going to help understand. So let's, let's first talk about the domain. Let's like do a domain first. So first, we're gonna see, okay, this function, where does it exist? On the x direction. Well, the function exists here, 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 exists all, all through the graph, and this graph keeps on going forever. So it keeps on exist existing all the way through the x-axis. So we're going to call this domain right here. This is like, for example, negative 2. And it's going to go, 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 go to negative infinity. And this is, that's 2 right there. And that's going to go, 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 go to infinity. So this domain is going to be. So we were saying this function exists all the way to infinity and all the way to negative infinity. So, therefore, should I say domain is from negative infinity, we always start from the left side, to, remember how they call me this, to infinity. And that should make it pretty clear what domain is what it means and how we what notation we use for it now let's talk about range for a second let's go back to blue so range so range instead of looking at the x-axis we will look at the y-axis well we have we already know that this function is going to go forever down right we already said that this function goes forever down and forever down is is always a, a key that tells you negative infinity or forever left negative infinity for domain and then for range all the way up positive infinity for domain all the way to the right is infinity so in this case we have all the way down for range so that, that we know is gonna be negative infinity but then when we're looking it stops right here correct it doesn't keep on going after the value of six it doesn't keep on going up so when we're writing our domain, we want to put it, here it goes all the way to, down to negative infinity in the y-axis. Remember, we're looking at range. It's going to be y-axis. goes all the way down to negative infinity. And it goes up, but not forever. It goes up to y is equal to 6. So the range will be negative infinity, remember we start from the bottom to the number 6. And remember, negative infinity is a parenthesis. Why is it a parenthesis? Because it, negative infinity is not defined. It always keeps on going. But the number 6, it literally stops right there. And it's defined at that value. So it's going to be a bracket for that. So we just went over what domain and range mean and how we use parentheses and brackets in context. And when it's infinity, we know it's always gonna be a parentheses. When it's a defined value, we always know it's gonna be a bracket. Then we understand how domain means where the function happens in the x direction, looking at the x axis and the y, and the uh, range I mean, is where the function is happening in the y axis or in the vertical axis, if you will. So that's basically the essence of domain and range. So moving on.